Hello and welcome everyone. This is session 930 MRI 2, uh, lecture 257. My name is Michael Reinwald and I'm a research engineer at Ixico here in London. And the title of my talk is Deep Learning Based Framework for Brain Atrophy Measurement, in which I'll present our newly developed algorithm. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues, Marina Papuzzi, Rich Tools and Robin Waltz. I'd like to disclose that all authors are employees at Ixico and Robin Waltz is a shareholder at Ixico. First, a very quick introduction. Atrophy or longitudinal volume change of certain regions of the brain is an important biomarker in many neurodegenerative diseases and also Alzheimer's disease. These measurements are used to monitor disease progression and potential treatment effects in clinical trials. However, current methods um, to estimate atrophy are prone to some challenges. Methods using multi-time point segmentations such as FreeSurfer suffer from long computation times and inaccurate estimations of small volumes due to the lack of accounting for partial volume effects. The boundary shift integral or BSI method is highly customized for certain regions that have clear boundaries in the image. And methods using nonlinear registration and Jacobian integration are flexible, but sometimes computationally intensive and slow. For example, with the advanced normalization tools or ARMS, which minimizes the difference between two images by subject specific optimization. Our aim is to overcome those challenges by developing a framework that can automatically estimate volume change in regions lacking distinct anatomical bounds using voxel wise deformation and AI. I'll now give you a quick overview of the four parts of our framework and then explain each of them in detail. The first one being image pre-processing. In simple words, uh, starting from a native T1 MRI scan and ending up with a correctly aligned skull stripped and normalized image. The next part is creating baseline segmentations. Uh, here we segment the baseline image into the regions that we want to measure atrophy in. The third part is the nonlinear registration part in which the baseline image is warped into follow-up space. And the fourth part is calculating the voxel as atrophy using the baseline segmentations and the deformation matrix. I'll now go into detail for all four parts of the framework. Part one, image processing, uh, can be split up into cross-sectional and longitudinal pre-processing. In the cross-sectional step, we process each of the two scans, baseline and follow-up, separately. This includes stripping the skull, correcting for intensity and homogeneities, and initiating a commune orientation. The longitudinal part then involves co-registration of the two scans so that they perfectly overlap another, and additional intensity corrections and normalizations. The result is two scans, baseline and follow-up, that are perfectly overlapping and free from any intensity and homogeneities. Part two, baseline segmentations. In this step, we generate the region of interest masks in which we want to calculate atrophy. Ixico has recently published several novel AI algorithms for semantic segmentation of brain structures, including caudate, putamen, hippocampus, and thalamus, and we presented those results at MIUA and the Huntington Study Group meeting last year. Here you can see a few of the titles. However, as part of this framework, any segmentation will do. You could use segmentations from other frameworks or use your own manual segmentations. As an example, here's a baseline T1 from the ADNI cohort um, in three different orientations. And here are the segmentations from three of our AI pipelines, whole brain in red, ventricles in blue, and hippocampus in green. If you're more interested in our segmentation pipelines, feel free to contact me or check out my colleague, uh, check whether it's poster here at ADPD on specifically the hippocampus segmentation. This is abstract ID 924, and the title is Automatic Segmentation Using Deep Learning for the Hippocampus. Part three, the nonlinear registration is the second AI powered part of the framework. Here we use an unsupervised learning based image registration, which means that we don't run a single subject optimization, um, but make use of global registration function inside a convolutional neural network or CNN that registers the two image nonlinearly in seconds. The CNN hence warps the baseline image into follow up space. 
and code generates a voxelized information field which describes how the baseline image has exactly worked. That's very convenient to have because we can then also warp any baseline segmentation accordingly. This video goes back and forth between a baseline image and the corresponding follow-up image. If you look closely, you can see atrophy in the ventricles and the chordate highlighted with the arrows. Our ferramic tries to minimize this difference via nonlinear registration and AI. The difference before warping is shown here. You can see the previously highlighted area is bright white, meaning a relatively large difference in intensity. And now the baseline image is being warped and eventually the difference between the two images is minimized. There are now overall less dark black or bright white areas, which would indicate large intensity differences. This warping can be represented as a deformation field, which our framework co-generates. It describes how every pixel or voxel is warped and can be applied onto any segmentation in baseline space. For example, let's use the three previously presented segmentations, whole brain, ventricles, and hippocampus from our range of AI algorithms. Here, you can see the segmentations being warped into follow-up space, and then the video jumps back to baseline and does the warping again. I'm reusing the arrows from previous slides to highlight the area of ventricles and chordae to show large atrophy. <coughs> Eventually, after warping, we can calculate the volume change by comparing the two volumes of the baseline and the warp segmentation. This concludes the summary of how the framework works, and we will now present some results. At first, we evaluate test-retest reliability on 30 subjects in the OASIS dataset with two scans less than 13 days apart. The question here is how the framework performs on two scans that have very little time between them. Expected atrophy for such a short time span being close to 0%. The second validation is a clinical validation on ADNI data, which includes 45 healthy control subjects, 45 subjects with mild cognitive impairment, and 40 subjects diagnosed with Alzheimer's. We calculate group separation using the p value of a man with U test and the common language effect size, which gives the probability of a random sample from one cohort being larger than a random sample from the other. We're comparing our method against the latest version of longitudinal free surfer, against BSI in all three regions, and against, against ANS plus Jacobian, a framework that includes the exact same pre-processing as ours, um, using ANS SYN as the nonlinear registration part, and then Jacobian integration using the exact same baseline segmentations to calculate atrophy. However, just as a side note, there's truly no gold standard or ground truth in atrophy values. For the next few slides, the results will be visualized on the left and corresponding metrics will be shown on the right. I will speak through the highlights, but feel free to browse them freely and contact me if you'd like to discuss any. In the test retest reliability, we expect zero atrophy, shown as a red dashed line on the left, across all subjects and regions. Both ANS and Jacobian and our AI method achieve mean volume change of less than 0.4% across all regions. This is not achieved by FreeServer, which shows larger mean atrophy values for ventricles 1.25% and the hippocampus 1.0%. Overall, our method performs similar to Arns and Jacobian. They both outperform the multi-time point method FreeServer. On to clinical validation, starting with atrophy in the whole brain tissue. Our framework shows significant group differences for whole brain atrophy between all ADNI cohort pairs. All methods show significant group separation between CN and MCI. Something that is not achieved, however, in FreeSurf and BSI is the group separation between MCI and AD. One thing to note here is the different scale of our method and BSI FreeSurf. Apparently our framework estimates smaller atrophy than the mentioned methods, but something that we're still evaluating. Atrophy in the ventricles looks very similar for all methods, with similar range of values and significant group differences between CN and, M CN and MCI. However, again, FreeSurf and BSI fail to show significant group differences between MCI and AD groups. On to the hippocampus. Here it becomes evident that Ansen Jacobian fails to differentiate between the groups. 
This is likely due to the fact that the hippocampus is a relatively small region and the resolution of the nonlinear registration in ANS is quite limited compared to our framework. All other methods show significant group separation between CN and MCI. Our framework again stands out in being able to differentiate MCI versus AD. In summary, our framework has a mean volume change in the test retest data set of less than 0.4% across all three evaluated regions and shows significant group differences between all cohorts and in all evaluated regions. Our method outperforms multi time point methods like FreeSurfer. It outperforms Ancient Jacobian for clinical validation of the hippocampus in performance and speed, and it performs in line with highly optimized PSI method across all validated regions. In summary, we have a fully automated approach to estimate volume change and arbitrary array ROIs. We generate fast, deterministic, and reliable measurements of volume change, and we are sensitive to disease progression even at the early MCI stage. Thank you. <laughs>